I'm back again. Quite a bit of time has elapsed since I had the last video or made the last video and I've been uh, busy pattern making and I told you that I wasn't going to show all the steps on this because it's just too tedious and you know this all takes a long time and in fact I would say now that probably three-fourths of the time on this engine is uh, going to be devoted to pattern making but uh, and I still have one left to do and that'll be the base but uh, Here's the pedestal, or the upright, and I made it in two pieces, and I think I mentioned that I had to make it in two pieces simply because my flask is not big enough to accommodate uh, the full length of this, which is, I think, about 15 inches. Now, these will be joined together by, like, a half-lap joint. They're a little bit longer than what they need to be right now, but, and I'm going to talk more about that piece later, but... Uh, the weather's warm in Illinois now. It's uh, April 2nd. And I took the liberty of uh, pouring a casting today. Very windy out though. Wanted to blow my flame out. But here's the casting for uh, this pattern. And uh, this big cylinder of metal that I'm holding is the riser. And it, in a way, is a sacrificial piece because uh, you notice that it is shrunk there, right in the middle. To lay a straight edge across there, but we got quite a shrink hole. And uh, to avoid shrinkage here on the thickest part of the casting, it goes all the way through, there's a tendency for this one to want to shrink considerably. So I uh, used a riser. This might be bigger than uh, what I needed. And a lot of times I'm just guessing at what I'm doing. So uh, that will be sawed off. And this can be remelted later on. This is the boss on both ends that will uh, hold the main shaft. And there will be a couple bearings in there. Some needle bearings, one on each side. The feet here are much bigger than what I need. Those will be milled off as well. And the pattern itself, just a few things about that. This is a flat back pattern. That is to say, it is not a split pattern as some of the patterns I've, uh, I've shown showed to you. And usually when we have a cylinder, uh, it's a split pattern. And you remember that from one of the other videos. So this is a, a flat back. And that means that... Uh, all of the casting really is poured in the bottom half of the flask. But this uh, pattern incorporates a couple loose pieces. By the way, these are all half lap joints here for strength. And I, you know, I put an awful lot of time into this considering I'm only making one casting and one engine. But when you flip this over, I wanted uh, this uh, bearing support to go clear through. So uh, on the, when I did the second half, then I add that piece to it. Notice that the fillet is attached to that piece. And when I turn this on the lathe, I center drill that hole, and that way when I do my drilling on the uh, milling machine or, or the drill press, whichever it is, I'm truly in the center already. And then similarly on the feet here, we've got some little uh, pegs there that hold that in place like that. And same thing on the other side. I never did trim these off in the wood. I got sick of trimming wood. I'd rather work in metal, so I'll do the trimming in metal. Tomorrow, if the weather permits, I'll make this casting. By the way, this is the flywheel. My brother Jan of Cody, Wyoming, gave me this cast iron flywheel. It's about eight and a half inches in diameter, five spoke. And it's got a, a 5 8 hole and uh, weighs about 5 pounds. So I think the proportion is uh, just about right uh, for this particular project. So that's the flywheel I'm going to use. Okay, it's off to the bandsaw to saw off the waste. And then there's just a little bit of filing to do to trim it up. And then I'm ready to start machining. I'll show you... Uh, various uh, machining operations, but probably not all of the operations. I just sawed the riser off, and then uh, another thought occurred to me. 
Notice that the actual gate here is quite thick going into the casting there. It's, you know, it's uh, probably inch and a quarter wide and an uh, inch deep. And you want it to be uh, thick and wide, deep and wide, like the old gospel song. And uh, also it was very short because the whole principle here is that we want uh, the metal uh, up here to be liquid long after this starts to solidify and the liquid metal feeds in there, gets drawn in as the shrinkage is uh, occurring and we don't want there to be a long skinny gate there that freezes off and then entirely defeats the purpose of the riser. Now the riser is only necessary in castings that have thicker cross sections. Often the riser is bigger and heavier than the casting itself. That would be true in big foundries that are doing uh, large, massive cast iron castings that might weigh a ton. I'm in the process of milling the feet off on the uh, pedestal here of the steam engine. And uh, notice the setup I got on the bridge port. I've got uh, these feet kind of hanging over the table here. And I'm clamped on some uh, inch and a half parallels. There's a parallel here and a parallel over here. Notice that my clamps are pretty much right over the parallels, so there's no flexing of the unit. I've squared it up with the table. That is, if it's easy to square a triangle up with the table, but I think I got it. And then I had to uh, use a real long end mill, and it, this ended up being a four-inch end mill, much longer than what I wanted, but I had didn't have a three-inch, so I had to go to this real long one. And yes, it's uh, there's a little bit of chatter, and it's uh, hanging out too far, but that's the best I could do without buying a special tool. And it mills far better with uh, climb milling than what it does with conventional milling. And I don't know if I've talked about that in any of my other videos, but uh, there's two forms of milling, climb milling and conventional milling. Climb milling almost always pr uh, produces a better finish, at least on the bridge port. Here we go with our climb milling cut. Taking off about 25 thousandths. Then we come clear down to the other leg here, or foot, and I'm cranking like a mad. And then ease up as you approach. Here we go. Just going to have some chatter when you have a, a long tool or the, maybe the work isn't uh, quite rigid enough because we got a little bit of a hangover here. I was trying to stay away from those fillets. Perhaps too much of a hangover. A couple more passes and I'm trying to take these feet down to a thickness here of about half inch thick. Okay, the bottom of the feet have been machined and we're about half inch thick right here. I got a nice finish on the bottom, not that it matters. But in the same setup here I would like to drill and ream this hole and it needs to be 13 16 for the bearings. So we're going to switch over to that setting and I hope that I have enough clearance in here to fit my tools. So we'll soon see. Alright, we're ready to start our drilling operation on this hub and I found the center and I'm uh, using the digital readout simply because of the length of some of the tools that we're going to use it's sometimes easier to move the table off to the side to change tools so I have the clearance there so that's the only reason I'm using that but uh, here's a sequence of operations we'll first uh, use the center drill then a quarter inch pilot and another pilot a half inch or thereabouts these sizes aren't very critical and then this is a uh, 1 32nd under the 13 16 and it happens to be uh, 25 30 seconds and then here's our 13 16 uh, reamer taper shank and this adapter to be used in the bridge port will hold the uh, number two more stapers 
and I'm ready to go.